What's up everyone? Tiger Stacker here. I'd like to talk with you about a continuation of a previous video. Before, I talked about what I learned in my youth from my gramps. Now, I am gramps. So now I want to talk to you about what I have noticed over my years, aka through the years. No, I am not talking about the song originally done by Kenny Rogers, but I do want to talk about the trends that I've noticed throughout my life and upon reflection of my life as a grandfather, hopefully to instill wisdom to the youth of this world, including but definitely not limited to my little tiger. I was born in the 1960s. I was a child of the 1960s and 70s and was becoming a young man in the 1980s. Similar to my grandfather, but yet different, and a continuation thereof, money had taken a definite change throughout the course of my life. Like my grandfather, I'd seen significant changes that unless you pay attention to history and reflect on your life and the political matrix of current day society, you miss it. Just like the Spanish-American philosopher George Santayana once said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it, or those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it, and we are watching history repeat. Just like my grandfather had seen the change in money and affecting the citizens of our country, I'm seeing similar things, but different. When I was a child, a very favorite popular television show for approximately three years was Batman, with Adam West playing the dual role of millionaire Bruce Wayne and Batman. But later in my life, Batman reemerges in the media as billionaire Bruce Wayne. Was this an error in Hollywood? I think not. What I think it was was the unrealized recognition of the change of our monetary system and the devaluation of our dollar. But not only in this one TV and movie franchise, but in reality as well. Let's talk about the average price of cars. In the 1960s, an average cost for a new car was approximately $2,600, and today it's well above 30000 The price of chicken was $0.20 cents per pound in the 1960s, and now look at the price of it. The price of a new home in the 1960s had a median home cost of $11,900, while the median cost income was $5,600, given a price-to-income ratio of 2.1. In 2019, the median home cost was $240,500, with an estimated median income a 68,000 and a price to income ratio of 3.5. So raises were not being kept up with inflation. The worker was working for less. He thought he was making more compared to the past, but in comparison to the cost of living, he was making less. The price of gasoline in the 1960s was approximately. 31 cents a gallon, and this is consistent with my memory of 31, 32 cents a gallon. In the 1970s, the prices did increase, but not a whole lot. Then came the oil shortage scare of the 1970s. By 1979, the gas prices had increased to 72 cents a gallon, and two years later, came to $1.42 a gallon. I remember long lines at the gas station 
people panicking to see if they can get enough gas to be able to go to work or run their lawnmower. People were rationed gasoline based upon your license plate till the next time they could get to a gas station. And you were not allowed to buy under $5 of gas at one time. Otherwise, you were told to leave. Gas prices in the 1980s continued to climb. And the 1990s continued to climb. And the early 2000s continued to climb. Note the sudden increase in gasoline between 2005 and 2006. Does anybody remember the number one reason they claimed the prices needed to go higher? And they claimed it was because of an oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico, but more so Hurricane Katrina, which happened in that time frame. Have we fixed our problem since Hurricane Katrina? I think so. But notice the gas prices never came down. Gas prices in the 2010s continued to climb. In fact, I remember them going into the $4 for the very first time. It hurt back then. It hurts now. But it hurts more now because the dollar doesn't buy as much. And yet the prices still continue. However, there was a drop in the price for a while because people stopped using petroleum products to heat their home and they moved to natural gas, which became a sudden competition for the OPEC nations. So to compete, they had to drop their prices. And our current day prices in gas, which does not even reflect states that have their citizens pay way more, such as California. In the early 1970s, my family moved from the patch, which was a small home mining community, to a farm. The price of the farm in the early 1970s was approximately... $35,000. And upon my mother's death, my siblings sold the farm in the early 2000s for well over $200,000. When I was a little boy, people had retirements provided for them by their employers. Those type of retirements hardly exist anymore except for maybe the railroad companies and governmental jobs. Now people are expected to provide their own retirement. 401ks, 403bs, IRAs, and the such. Now you have to put in your own. And if you're lucky, you might get a match, but not always. Insurance companies, the medical deductible has gone up significantly. Copays, premiums, and the monthly payments for that was covered almost entirely by dad's employer. Those types of programs are very few and far between now. Employers now try to hire as many professionals, including mine, as a 1099 instead of a W-2 because they don't want to pay benefits and they don't want to give a hard-working person job security. It's politically easier to keep them as a 1099 where they have to pay more of their Social Security and benefits out of their own pocket. Once again, Gramps' wisdom comes into play. Figures don't lie, but liars could figure. True throughout his lifetime, between the 1890s and the 1970s, true in my lifetime from 1962 until present day, and will be true in my little tiger's lifetime, your grandchildren's lifetime, because man never changes. So let's talk about neighborhoods and neighbors. In the 1960s, when we lived in the coal mining town, no doors were locked. No one was interested in robbing each other and doing harm to each other. But now, we lock everything. Frequently, wifey locks me out of the house because she's in such a habit of locking the door that I have to call her on the cell phone to let me back in. So like Fred Flintstone trying to get Wilma to open up the door. I feel like Fred Flintstone trying to get back in the house. What about racial problems over the years? Unfortunately, 
racial issues have existed for many decades. This is a problem of mankind. We are all God's children, and racism is wrong. But what I remember was a good man, Martin Luther King Jr., who fought for the rights to be equal. And during my youth, I noticed a push throughout the 1960s and 70s for peace and harmony, not just against war in Vietnam, but generally all over. The band, The New Seekers, had a song very popular, We'd Like to Teach the World to Sing. Because of YouTube rules, I'm not allowed to play it for you, but I'll include it in the description below. This song lasted many years and became so popular that there was a push for peace amongst all races in this country and hopefully worldwide. A noble cause, but it hasn't yet been realized for a totally different reason. But yet this song became a huge jingle for the Coca-Cola Company in 1971, which started off with one female singer progressing to a menagerie of societies, colors, countries, all singing the same song. Now, granted, in this case, they were using a song of peace and harmony to promote their product, but the concept was the same and sung loud and clear. Peace and harmony most many people in one world. This jingle performed on the hilltop of Italy with people all over the world. And yet, racism has taken an ugly twist. This here is my own personal schematic of what I perceive. On this axis, you see racism. On this axis is time. From the 1960s through the 2020s. Racism to the lowest level for peace and harmony, all the way to fighting. And what I had seen in my personal observations was decrease in fighting over the years. How many of you remember the first kiss on television between Captain Kirk and Lieutenant Mukuro? That show nearly got canceled because of that one kiss. And then came the Jeffersons, an interracial married couple where Mr. Jefferson didn't approve, which was a switch from what I'd seen. Racism was decreasing towards peace and harmony, and somewhere in this time, things changed and got worse because of critical race theory, hatred, what I like to call reverse racism. We now see a situation where Instead of the blacks being treated badly, the whites are being treated badly. And racism is wrong, no matter which way it's going. In my youth, the military, police, health care providers were treated with respect. I don't see that happening that much anymore. In my youth, people went to church every Sunday. Businesses were shut down. You had to get your gasoline on Friday or Saturday, otherwise you couldn't run your vehicle. And you better have gasoline backup. When I was a boy, my mother had girlfriends. That term meant that she was female and had friends that were female and had no concept in its definition of romantic interaction. How many of you remember the lyrics to Tim McGraw's song, Back When? I miss back when. I do too. Tim McGraw. Our society has changed, and not for the better. Whether we're talking about finances, interpersonal issues, family, but it does not mean that we have to give up the good fight. Treat each other well. Treat each other with respect. Be good to your neighbor. Be good to your family. Try to find a peaceful way to bring all sorts of conflict to an end. 
This is what God wants from all of us. And maybe one day we will see a reversal in our monetary system in hatred, and we'll see an improvement in our society, in our country, in the world, like the people in the 1970s was hoping for. Don't give up the good fight, people. May God go with all of you and your families and our country. Good night, everyone. Tiger Stacker, out.